Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Green Brain by Frank Herbert. Dane reads. So this is a New English Library Limited old little paperback. It's only about 160 pages, arguably almost a novella. I mean, it does have quite small print, so I would say this has got to be 40, 50,000 words, something like that. But yeah, we're going to uh, check out the blurb here, go through it and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. It began when a stranger walked into the small town. A man whose face was always in shadows, always turned away from an inquiring gaze. A, a face that seemed to shimmer and change. A face of multifaceted iridescence. Nobody in the town took much notice of the stranger with his odd fluid walk. People minded their own business until... Until the power that held the figure together began to weaken its impossible hold. And the strange man began to lose his shape, began to split into an infinity of parts. Multiple award winner Frank Herbert, author of the classic science fiction novel Dune, has constructed a story of unique terror. There are no evil Dane aliens, reads. the enemy is of Earth. A tiny enemy, easily destroyed by the flick of a finger when isolated. But when it combines, no power can stand against it. And this enemy, well basically like, mankind is like eradicated bugs and stuff. That's all I want to say. Uh, but maybe they haven't eradicated them that successfully. So I, uh, I, I like this little exchange here that I want to share. I should have warned you, Johnny, Chen Lu said. She has an Irish temper. And he thought, he's putting on an act for my benefit, devious little man. I see, Martino said. If God didn't see fit to rid us of insects, perhaps we're wrong in trying to do this for ourselves. Ren glared at him in dismay. Chen Lu suppressed a surge of pure rage. That devious Latin manoeuvred Rin into this position, deliberately. My government doesn't recognise the existence of God, Chen Lu said. Perhaps if God were to initiate an exchange of embassies. Perhaps. Only then, perhaps, though. Okay, so then we get this guy. Um, I'm just going to read this out because this, this was sinister to me. Very sinister. To the mountains there, said the Indian behind him. Again, that hand came forward to point off to the right. Zhao, with the hand close to his eyes illuminated by the dash lights, saw the scale-like parts of a finger shift position. In that shift, he recognised the scale shapes by their claw fringes. The beetles! Not the beetles, the beetles. The finger was composed of linked beetles working in unison. Zhao turned, stared into the Indian's eyes, saw them why they glistened so brightly. They were composed of thousands of tiny facets. Hospital there, the creature beside him said, pointing. Zhao turned back to the controls, fought to keep from losing composure. They weren't Indians, they weren't even humans. They were insects, some kind of hive cluster shaped and organised to mimic a man. The implications of this discovery raced through his mind. How did they support their weight? How did they feed and breathe? How did they speak? And then Zhao has a great line here, he says, God is a Brazilian, Zhao thought, calling to mind his nation's old expression of self-confidence touched by fear. At night, God corrects the errors Brazilians make during the day. And then uh, we get this, which is from the point of view of the insect brain. So I'm just going to read this scene out. They have such a talent for occupying themselves with inconsequentials, these humans, the brain thought. Even in the face of terrible pressures, they argue and make love and throw trivialities into the air. Messenger relays came and went through the rain and sunshine that alternated outside the cave mouth. There was little hesitation over commands now. The essential decision had been made. Still the reports came because the brain had ordered, report to me everything they say. So much talk of God, the brain thought. Is it possible such a being exists? And the brain reflected that certainly the human's accomplishments carried an air of grandeur that belied the triviality of their reported actions. Is it possible this triviality is a code of some sort, the brain wondered. But how could it be? Unless there's more to these emotional inconsequentials in this talk of a god than appears on the surface. The brain had begun its career in logics as a pragmatic atheist. Now doubts began to creep into its computations, and it classified doubt as an emotion. Still, they must be stopped, the brain thought. No matter the cost, they must be stopped. The issue is too important, even for this fascinating trio. If they are lost, I shall try to mourn them. The Green Brain by Frank Herbert. It was alright. Um, again, it was one of those where the main things that stuck with me were the creepy like people made out of insects and then again the brain and a lot of the like philosoph uh, philosophies that the brain was having and the way it was analyzing human culture but overall it was kind of forgettable to be honest i can't give it anything more than a 3.5 out of 5 and a relatively low one but uh it was all right and if you're interested in frank herbert worth checking out although i would suggest uh the santa roga bar the santa roga barrier before you get to this so there we have it, that's The Green Brain by Frank Herbert. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.